Appreciate the Lord. I can't thank him enough for what he's done in my life. Yes. Amen. Uh, maybe you don't know the change, but I do. Amen. I, I know what God is and know what who God is and what he's done in my life. And, well, he sure has been good to me. Amen. Thank him for saving me and bless me the way he has and for keeping me. Yeah. Well, I couldn't keep myself, that's for sure. Amen. Well, I couldn't save myself. How could I keep myself? Amen. Amen. I had a good hand of God, though. Yes, bless you, Lord. One of these days, we're going to see what's on the other side. Amen. Thank God. See what we preached about. See what we sung about. See what we prayed about. See why we worshiped here. Job said, These worms may devour my flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one day I'm going to see him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Clouds get full, they empty themselves. I don't know if you feel what I feel this morning, but I know he's real. Amen. I was sitting back here this morning reading as they were singing. I got to reading about one of the most precious, important births that ever took place in this world. <coughs> And the Bible said that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Well, if you just stop right there, it probably don't mean much to you. But then it goes on to say, which has been interpreted, God is with us. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you realize that this morning, not because you read it on ink and paper, but you felt His presence and you know He's real. Amen. And you know that God is really Amen. here with you. God is with us. Do you understand what that's saying? Amen. Brother Charles, God's not just around us. God is with us. Amen. God's not just in our presence, but God is with us. Amen. He said his name shall be called Emmanuel because that means God is now. God will be and shall be with us. God is with his people this morning. I hope you understand what he's talking about in Old Testament days. You'll read in, 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 over in Psalm 51 where David prayed after he sinned and he said, God, I pray that you'll restore me the joy of thy salvation. He said, but don't take your spirit away from me. What did he mean when he said don't take your, uh, your spirit away from me because in Old Testament days the Spirit of God would come down. God would come down and He would make Himself known amongst His people. Brother Charles, if something needed to be done and the people couldn't do it on their own, God would come down to where they was and God would dwell among them and God in His presence would come around them and He would, he would make sure that they was able to do what they need to get done spiritually, Brother Tony. And God would come down and be around them for a little while. And God would come down and He'd be on them for a little while. The Bible many times, the Old Testament said this, the power of God and the Spirit of God came upon them. How? Because God out of heaven came down to where they was and God surrounded them and sometimes he built a hedge about them so the enemy couldn't hurt them. And many times he came down and he brought fire down out of heaven to, to destroy the enemy but he would come down around his people he would be around them and he'd be upon his people. But then after he accomplished that which he wanted to do God would go back into heaven and God would ascend back into heaven and then God would no longer be upon them. You remember reading over in the Old Testament where the man said, he said, he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. <laughs> Samson said he wished not. He knew not at that point in time when he was getting ready to do what he always done with the power of God on him. The power of God was gone. But then in the New Testament when you get over there, 
The Bible said that the virgin will conceive and bring forth the son and when this son is brought forth, his name will be called Emmanuel because now God's not among you, God's not around you, God's not upon you, but God is with you. God is in you. God shall take up his abode in you. God's not just among us this morning. God is here with us. And I'm glad that when I come to church, he's with me. But when I walk out the doors, if he was just among us, we might leave today and leave him in the church house. But he's not among us in the church house. He's with us in the church house. And when I walk out them doors today and I fight a cruel world and all kind of crazy stuff and chaos is going on in this world, I've got a God that ain't among me, but God that is with me. He don't only go to church with me, he goes in the world with me. He's wherever I go and he made a promise and said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said I'll never leave you. That means he's not ascending back on high anymore. And when he goes the next time he goes back on high we're going with him because he is with us and if he's with us we're going with him we were crucified with him we'll live with him and one day we'll reign with him because he is now Emmanuel he's not just God among us he's just not God on us he is God with us and I'm glad when I walk through a valley he ain't somewhere around me but he is with me in the valley he is with me through the trial he is with me through sickness. He's with me through health. He's with, he's with me. He is like a marriage. He's, hey, he'll do it in sickness and in health through poverty as it well. He's with me in the good times. He's with me in the bad times. He's with me all the time because he said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. That's a God I'm telling you what that loves you so much every time you walk away he walks closer to you to try to get you to come back. It's a God that when you turn your back on him He'll never turn his back on you. He is with you wherever you go. The Bible said, if I make my bed in hell, thou art with me. What he's saying, he's not saying you're going to hell. What he's saying is that don't matter where you go, you can't go where God ain't. It don't matter what you go through. You can't go through anything that God can't handle. God is with us. I'm trying to sit back here this morning. God just kicked my honey bucket over, reading the scripture and it said, his name would be called Emmanuel. If I'd have stopped right there, Brother Charles, I'd have probably got up and preached something else. But I got up, I read just a new few more words, and it said, which is, God is with us. I'm glad God's with us this morning. He's not some a ruler. He's not some king that's ruling from a far distance and saying, now y'all boys do this, y'all girls do that. No, he's here with us this morning in the church house. He's with us everywhere we go. I'm glad God's with us. Amen. Ain't Old Testament no more. Amen. He ain't going back. He ain't here for a little while. He's here to stay. He's here with us. He has taken up his abode in us. Jimmy, I was thinking about reading that scripture. I remember so many times. We lived in a little trailer down there on the bottom of the hill, and our grandma lived up on the top of the hill, and we didn't have water down there when we was little. Many times we had to go up the hill and get baths and come back down the hill. But many times we came back down the hill, it was already dark. Mama said, go up the hill and get your baths now and come back. You got to go to school tomorrow. Brother Tony, we walked back down the hill, but we walked out the door and it'd be dark. And we'd look around and we hated to walk. I did. I did. I don't know about the rest of them. I was a scaredy cat. I was about six or seven years old and I'd go to walk down that hill and I'd look back at my grandma and say, go ahead now. I'm going to watch you when you go. I said, Okay. I walked down the hill and I looked back up there. She'd still be watching. She'd still be watching. Now listen, I'm glad she's watching over me, but I'm going to tell you what, I'd have felt a whole lot safer if she just went with me. Yes. Amen. I'd have felt a whole lot better if she just went down the hill with me, Brother Mark. Yeah. I'm telling you what, I'm glad God is watching over us. But I'm glad even more that God ain't only just watching over me as I walk through dark places, but God is walking with me through the dark places. I'm glad God's watching over me when I got a problem, but I'd much more rather have a God that walks with me through the problem. I'm glad God is not just only watching over you, but God is with you through it all. God will never, he said, I'll never, you know how big that is. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That means no matter how bad it gets, that means no matter how troubled you are about your situation.
situation in life. And no matter how far you go out in the world, and no matter how far you do go and see him, and don't no matter how far in depression you go, God said, I will never, he said, I will never, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the kind of God we serve. And it's because God said a virgin shall conceive and bring forth the son. And his name just is not Jesus, but it's also Emmanuel. Amen. He was saying he's the son that's going to die for you. He's the son that's going to die for you, but he's the son that's also going to go with you. Right. You know what that means? Brother Tony, when this time comes for me, time comes for you and all the rest of us, if God don't come back before the end, if Jesus don't come back to take the church home before the end, that means we're going to die too. Yeah. You reckon about that time, God's going to say, well now, I've come as far as I can go. <laughs> oh no, he said, he said, I'll never, I'll never. So when the time comes and you feel like death's knocking at your door and you feel like you ain't going to never, you ain't, you ain't going to make it, it's all over. You feel like you're going to have to cross this valley alone. I promise you, the Bible said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. I'm telling you, he's with you now. He's with you then. He's with you forever. Ever. He's a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't only die for you. He'll go through it with you when you die and you cross over to the other side. Amen. Boy, that's a good God, ain't it? Amen. He said, I am with you. Through all eternity. Yeah. I've had some friends and you have too. He said, I'll be with you through it all. And you've turned around at the toughest times in your life and you thought they'd be there. You turned around and you said, where are they all at? You couldn't get them on the phone. They wouldn't come visit. And you wonder how am I going to make it through this alone? When you realize that there's one that will never leave you alone. You'll never have to go alone if you'll trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible, that's why the Bible said he's a friend that stays closer than a brother. Why? Because brothers will deceive you. Brothers will leave you. Brothers will do you wrong. Brothers will cheat you. And that means brothers, sisters all throughout. People will let you down. Preachers will let you down. People will let you down. But the Bible said God is with us. Amen. You'll never find in the Scripture after it said God is with us where He ain't. <laughs> Amen. He is with us. And you say, wait a minute though. He went away, but He said, I'll send the Comforter. <laughs> I'll send somebody to be with you. I'll send the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost came and took up His abode in us, you know what He's saying? It's a done deal. Right. He Amen. took up his abode in you and now it's a done deal. I am with you always. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't you glad God, you got a God Amen. that's not like friends? You got God that's not like family members. You got a God that ain't like some preachers. You got a God that ain't like some Christians. You're, you got a God that'll never, ever leave you nor Amen. forsake you. Amen. I don't know why God told me to turn, I mean, got me to turn those scriptures. I already had two or three different sermons I wanted to preach this morning. And I sat back at Brother John and they was reading that and Sister Renee started singing that song. I sing because. And that she said, I am not alone. <laughs> I opened those scriptures and said, God is with I, I, I can't make that up. I didn't know they was going to sing that song. I didn't know I was going to open that scripture. I didn't know God was going to show me that this morning. But God knew you'd be here. God knew you need to be reminded this morning. you got a God that's bigger than any problem you face in life. He's bigger than any doctor's appointment. He's bigger than any job decision. He's bigger than any marital problems. He's bigger than any church problems. He's bigger than anything. And God wanted to remind you today through the songs and through the scriptures that God has not left you. God is still with you. God still loves you. He just wants you to come back home. You need to realize where your help comes from. The Bible says our help is in the name of the Lord. Yes. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Yeah, you run out here in this world. Yeah, you run out here and get a little bit of help every now and then. And God will use other people to help you. But your greatest help is on your knees in prayer and trusting God Amen. in this word by faith in Jesus Christ. And God just wanted to remind you this morning that God is still here and God Amen. is with you. God has not left you. God has not forsaken you. He never has and He never will. You may turn your back on Him, but He'll never turn His back on you. He died that you might live. He's not about to forsake you now. God paid the price so that you could have eternal life and have it abundantly here in this, in this world. God's done that for you and God's done that for me. You can come on to the piano, sister. 
Y'all can sing a couple of songs since I preached so short. That's fine, fine with that. But I'm just giving you what God gave me sitting right back there. And when I got up, God wanted to remind you that He is with you today. He's not left you. And He's a faithful God. Yes, I was so thankful my grandma watched me over me that day and every night. But I'm telling you what, I would have felt a whole lot safer if she just went with me. And I'm glad I'm not looking at a God saying, Boy, I, I'm glad you watched over me, God, but I sure wish you'd come be with me a little while. Because He is here. And He is with me. He said... God is with us. Do you feel God's presence? Do you know He is with you? If you don't, there's something wrong. There is something standing between you and the presence and the power of God in your life. And, or either you don't know Him. The power said to know Him and the power of His resurrection. The power of His resurrection is that He got up on His own. The Bible said He by Himself purged our sin. He by Himself done it because God the Father had to turn His back on His Son while He became something that He did not ever, ever have a part in and that's sin. So He by Himself purged our sin. When He by Himself purged our sin, then He by Himself was resurrected the third day. And the Bible said to know Him and the power of His resurrection. If you don't know the power of His resurrection, you don't know Him. You don't know what it's like to have a new life, be resurrected, lay down the old man and get up a new man. If you don't know what it's like, you don't know Him. And maybe this morning that's why you don't have peace in your heart. You don't have peace of, of eternal life. You don't have peace through your troubles and trials today when you're going through a tough time. When the doctor says this, the doctor says, you don't have peace in all that because you don't know Him and the power of His resurrection. If He was able to resurrect Himself from the grave of being there in the tomb three days, He's able to take care of your problems. He's able to take care of your situation. I don't know what you're going through. I know what I'm going through and I need a God that's going to be with me through it all and I'm serving one. Are you... You need to be serving Him. He's here today and He wants to help you. Let's all stand with our heads bowed.